All right. Yeah. Well, we have the Maricopa County uh, deputy sheriff there saying, "Hey, there's so many people here that they don't want us to block the exit." So as we wrapped up that debate, which uh, uh, was fiery and heated because this is a hot topic, this whole issue of how gender could impact the deliberations. I want to bring in Travis Alexander's dear friend, Dave Hall. And Dave, you have so many extraordinary stories to tell about your friend. Um, first of all, I know that you are very close to the family of Travis Alexander. What can you tell us about what they are going through right now? I mean, we're all experiencing anxiety, but I can't even imagine what they are experiencing. Well, I'm sure that anything that we're experiencing is uh, multiplied thousands of times. Uh, you know, I think to myself, if if this was one of my kids that had to go through this and I had to sit through that trial and see those photos, how bad I would want justice served. And, uh, you know, to me, he was a friend, but to them, I mean, that's blood. And and uh, the anxiety that they must have is, is off the charts compared to anything that we might be feeling here today. Yeah. And um, let me ask you about an extraordinary experience that you had. And you were with Jody Arias the day after she killed Travis Alexander. Because we all know that what Jody Arias did was uh, she killed Travis Alexander, she got in her car, and she drove to Utah. And then she met up with Ryan Burns, uh, who was a love interest uh, from prepaid legal as well and you're with prepaid legal now legal shield and you all went to a, a, a prepaid legal event and then you had dinner afterwards at Shelley's and she was there tell us about what she looked like what she was wearing her hands and what ran through you well the first thing that jumped out to me was her hair color was dramatically different we'd always known her as a platinum blonde so when she showed up as a dark brunette that was definitely a big eye catcher for us the next thing was uh, a long sleeve shirt. We're in the middle of June. It's 100 degrees outside. And uh, she was never someone that was known to be real modest in her attire. So a long sleeve shirt was a little bit weird. Um, but that alone doesn't make you question whether or not somebody murdered somebody. Her hand was also bandaged up. But again, she explained that away with she had cut it at work on a glass. And so, you know, being that it was five days later that we found out Travis was dead, none of those things jumped out in our mind at the time that, you know, something went wrong. But then the moment that you got word that Travis was dead, how did you rewind back to that moment when you're having dinner with her when she shows up uh, to go to this prepaid legal meeting a day late? You know, I didn't even uh, think about all those signs because we didn't know how he died for still a few more weeks. We just knew that he was dead. But all I had to hear was that he was dead, and I knew he, he was so high on life, he was so excited on life, that I knew it wasn't a suicide, and he was so healthy and very physically fit person that it would be a very slim chance that he would have died of natural causes. And uh, right away, we just knew that somebody had done something to him. That's all we knew. And so many of us, many of Travis's friends contacted the Mesa Police Department to tell them, you need to look at Jody Arias. We don't know how she would have done it. We don't know what she would have done, but we know that Jody is involved somehow. Now the Mesa Police Department downplayed it, played it off. Hey, thanks for the tip. We've got a lot of different things we're looking at. But uh, I think right out of the gate with as many people that contacted them, that she went right to the top of the suspect list right away. Yeah, and uh, I remember one of your friends, uh, Clancy Talbot, uh, told us that it was a case of fatal attraction, that she actually uh, told the uh, detective, Detective Flores, she goes, it's fatal attraction. And would you have described it that same way? Yeah, the fact that, uh, I don't know how much I can say, because I, I don't want the jury to hear things that they, they, well, they shouldn't be hearing. Five stories above us no, deliberating, but, and they're not we, watching us right now. We, we, knew that, uh, we knew that she had slashed his tires on his car, not once, but twice, and also a girl that he was dating. And, you know, on a BMW, those run flat tires are very, very expensive, especially to, place to replace two days in a row. And we knew that if someone's got that much hate and venom in them, to go to that extreme to cause so much hurt on someone that quite honestly taking their life probably wasn't going to be a big leap.